getting ahead of myself here. You can't see that. Let me adjust the microphone. How's everyone doing today? Uh, I've got orange juice and coffee. I'm trying to save some coffee for later because I have to leave early today. What's up, Ed? Good morning. Guten Morgen. Avito, let's see. I see your questions here. Hold on. Give me a minute. Um... Let's see. Yeah, remember to guard your privacy, it says here at the top of the live chat. I'm like, yeah, that's the last thing I've done, huh? <laughs> uh, hello, Ben, Avito, Art, Dennis. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jim and Bonnie. I'm assuming Bonnie's here. I see Jim. Um, interesting about your guitar. Uh, you getting the wrong guitar. It was in a... Yamaha box and they actually have video of a guy putting the your Yamaha in a tailor box and sending you a left-handed tailor uh, it's like that's just weird it's crazy so and then you were waiting for it with bated breath you know hey Bob Ben good to see you uh oh is oh that's right bon, oh that's right Bonnie's uh getting knee stuff done I forgot about that. Okay. <laughs> this is so funny that we're all, we know everybody's business. <laughs> I mean, none of these people, you, none of you had anything in common before. The, well, that's not true. Not necessarily not in common, but AJ. So uh, let's see, as I'm waiting for people to show up, because right now we're just at 17. Um, I can, I can try to, I can try to touch on uh, Vito's questions. Uh, help with how to allow specific strings to remain open when I have barred the fretboard. Uh, something like you showed in your Coldplay tuning video. Well, actually, there is no bar in that video. Um, uh, I love that tuning. Um, and it's not the official tuning that they used. I've had... It's, I wasn't sure when I did the video. All I know is I, I kind of stumbled on it uh, trying to... And... Uh, uh, I was told later that no, indeed, he tuned the, I think the D string is tuned down to B. So he's actually probably doing this chord hollowed out. But yeah, I'm not barring. I've actually, it's like if you're playing a bar chord and then you lift it up and all you're getting is the, is the bottom string with your first finger. So like with... You don't even need to play the bottom, just don't hit the bottom. If you want to sound like that, uh, like yellow, it's kind of like that. Um, I, but I like I like hitting the A chord. It sounds really nice with that D sharp in it. Which is this, this would be a, like a Lydian triad or a Lydian chord. But I've used it a couple times for writing. Uh, I just did a new song with an artist, and I used a similar tuning, not that one, but similar. Someone also said you could tune the E, I'm sorry, the B string, up to C. And now you can just play like F, G. Uh, if you tune the C, uh, or the B up to C, you can get the same kind of effect. But yeah, there's no bar in that, in, in that lesson. It's all open, I'm opening uh, like this. And if you want to just move an E chord around, you can do that. Okay. And then you had another question. How many guitars do I own? Uh, well, I, sh I, wish I shouldn't say that here. I don't know. I actually don't know how many guitars I own. I, I'm getting stuff all the time. Uh, and <laughs> to be honest, I think my son has a couple of mine. And <laughs> I, I don't have any of his right now. But uh, I don't know. About a, probably 80 instruments in total if you include ukuleles and man banjos. But... Shoot, I have 10 ukuleles and banjos alone. So, uh, so um, let's see what else. Any other questions here? Um, Pepper's here. Good to see you, Pepper. Um, yeah, 
hopefully Bonnie's okay. I mean, uh, Kathy's okay. Why do I always say Bonnie when I mean Kathy? I have no idea. Uh, Peter's here. Dan, and just a reminder, this is going to be a shorter lesson because I have to go to church. Uh, um, we're going to record two services. And uh, so we'll be um, doing that. Uh, hold on. Let me, uh, there we go. Let me just get my tuner out. Where's my tuner? Uh, you know, I, I've had people say, why do you have so many guitars? You can only play one at a time. But I, I always reply, well, do you ask your mechanic why he has so many wrenches? Because <laughs> nobody ever seems to do that. In fact, I, I, I even shot a video at my mechanic. I was going to air it. Um, I may do another one um, later. Oh, I got to turn on the light. That was going to be one of the uh, sips. I got pants on, obviously, but it's not one of the sips. Well, Kathy's here. How's your eye, Kathy? Any better today? Closing chat now by... Uh, David East is here, I think. I saw him on the Discord. So if you need the Discord, uh, I'll, I'll post the Discord link here in a little bit. Everybody gets together afterwards. Uh, Dan's here. Uh, let's see. Hook is here. Diane's here. Won't have probably won't have time for a story today, Diane. We'll have to I'll have to come up with one for tomorrow. I had an idea for one yesterday and I forgot what it was. Now I gotta remember. Okay. So we were talking about strumming. I've got a, a drum groove that we can play along with, and I think I'm set at 82 on this now. So we're, I'm going to speed it up just a, just a skosh. You know, skoshi is Japanese for little, and I'm wondering if that's the origin of the term skosh. Which very, very few Japanese words make it into the American lexicon. A lot of French words do. I'm always amazed at how many French words are used on a, a semi regular basis in America. Um, Spanish words too. Not many German words. Uh, but a lot of French words are, are kind of built into the whole. Um, but so yeah, so Kathy, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, Kathy, if you look left and right, is your uh, pain up and down? I've, I've had that and I can't remember why I got it or what happened or if I got a... It could just be an infection in your eye and then every time you move your eye, it just hurts. No change. Okay. All right. I had surgery on my eye when I was a kid, um, but that was a long time ago. Remember, I told you the story about that. <laughs> I had to wear an eye patch for six months, covering my only good eye. They thought I had lazy eye and that my eye would correct, but it wasn't lazy eye. It was just blind. <laughs> so I was completely, yeah, I can, uh, I can pull up the Discord, can, uh, Discord thing here. Hold on. Bump. Here's the Discord link. So uh, a lot of people are you know, chit-chatting away. There's Kathy. I see she let, sent me a message. Um, and uh, post pictures, talk about guitar stuff, uh, talk about their favorite guitar players that aren't me. <laughs> uh, let's see. So we... Um, Uh, we were doing strumming pattern, and uh, the first pattern, the pattern we're kind of been working with is just the solid eighth note. And four, and one, and two, and three. And we've been doing an E chord to E sus um, so that you can keep track of where one is. So we'll change on beat one, and that way, um, when uh, we start doing some syncopations, you'll have a better chance of keeping track of where one is, because that can be very difficult. Na 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 is in the house. Uh, okay, so we did these where we where we played quarter notes instead of eighth notes on each of the individual um, uh, beats one two three four, and um, I can play those for, if you want to play along with me. Just uh, E will do do each one a couple times here. Uh, one two three and four and one.
had a band in high school. Okay, the next one is one and two, three and four. One and two, three and four. I'm sorry, it's four and, so we gotta do four and. One and two, three and four and. One and two, three and four and. Okay. I'm gonna buy that Kurt Cobain guitar, I think. Okay, now um, the next one is beat, uh, we're gonna hold beat three. So it's one and two and three, four and 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 one. Okay, now the last one is uh, we're gonna hold beat four. One, two, three, four, one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. And again, the thing I like about music notation, it often looks exactly like what it sounds like. So then what I did was, uh, where is it? Oh, it's here. Um, I did the, I did the other. So before we put quarter notes on the one, two, three, and four, now these are syncopated patterns. Those others would be, I would call those simple rhythms. These are syncopated rhythms. And what the difference is, you'll notice in all of these, we have two ups in a row. Now I didn't start with the, the dropping one, the, the, so I kind of did them in a, I, I, I've got them here in a weird order. The, the last one there in the bottom right hand corner is weird because we're not playing anything on one. That's not unusual. There are a lot of times we don't play something on one because maybe we want something else to occupy that moment or we want to start the song on the end of, of one or something like that. Um, but it was, the notation on these are kind of weird. And I also, you know, don't always like the way, Finale kind of defaults to this, putting a quarter note there on the end of, one, like the first one and the, and the bottom uh, left-hand side, um, that uh, it's an eighth note and a quarter note, which a quarter note is equal to two eighth notes. And then you've got an eighth note and then four more eighth notes. And so that's a total of eight eighth notes. That's the same as, same amount of space as the top one um, up there that's just the simple thing. Okay. But when we, um, when we turn, the other way you could write that is we could have had, see the tie in the second one, we could have had a tie between the end of one and two in that first one, but instead it naturally drops in a, um, uh, well, I actually could have notated it that way, but it wouldn't. It would. It would still have the four groupings and I the, the four notes together and then four notes together. And I wanted it two two four, two two four like that. So anyway, the way they do it, this is perfectly correct notation. It's probably the most common way to notate this. Um, don't freak out. Uh, there will be no quiz on this, cel celebratory. My goal is just for you to maybe start to be able to play some of these. Um, and we're gonna take it slow. Like I said, I think I have the metronome or the, drums, the drum loop set at 82 beats per minute. Um, so I um, will play this and uh, just so you can hear it, I'll play the first one, okay? And basically it's syncopated because there are two ups in a row where we're gonna miss the down. We're not we're gonna miss the strings on the down stroke. Okay, so it's gonna be down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And keep in mind what I call the standard folk group is a syncopated groove. That one's I 
haven't written that down here because it's a little different. It starts with a quarter note and then two eighths tied, and then tied to another eighth and then three more eighth notes. Uh, but it has the syn the um, the syncopation is on your you're not hitting beat three. So let's just try this. Uh, try to keep your arm moving down up up down up down. practice doing ups, up strums by themselves, that'll help you get used to missing the strings uh, on the down strum. Let me move this a little bit like that. Okay, let me throw on the drum machine. We can play along with the drum machine. Let's see what this sounds like. notice about this pattern is that the first because we're not playing anything on B2 okay we're skipping B2 um, we're leaving a space for the snare hit which sounds really cool um, it, it's like it's like you're kind of nodding to the drummer and saying this is your moment <laughs> three four the hardest part of this is keeping your arm uh, moving and talking at the same time Three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and and three, and four, and one, and sorry, and three, and four, and one, and and three, and four, and one. Okay, so let's let's move on and listen to the. The next pattern, all right, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting behind on the the, uh, tech, the chats. Um, it is not a Neumann mic, uh, um, it's, a, it's a Gefell mic from Germany. Uh, I don't have any Neumann mics, I have, uh, I have some AKG mics, um, but you asked a question, see, what are your thoughts on DI versus single mic? Or dual mic setup when you record. I generally just use one microphone. Um, uh, yeah, I use a lot of virtual amps now because it's just easy. And again, most of what I'm doing is I'm playing on movies, TV shows, but even records, um, I'm using virtual amps. Everybody is, um, and uh, it's not it's not a secret anymore. Um, but with movies and TV shows and games in particular, there could be a lot going on. So to just to spend three hours getting that perfect amp sound and moving the mics around and miking the room and getting all that stuff going on uh, for a scene that's going to have motorcycles and crashes and people screaming, um, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and in games especially, people turn off the music so often in games. But um, And as far as recording acoustic guitars, same. I, I always use a mic. I don't go direct. Um, so that's maybe that's one area where I wouldn't... Um, uh, uh, take a nod towards the uh, technological side of things. But I, I definitely prefer a mic. I usually use one mic. I occasionally have used two mics. If I were recording a solo guitar record, like fingerstyle acoustic, I would probably use a two mic setup. Uh, you know, something on the 12th fret and something on the body of the guitar, something like that. In the studio, I've had as many as three or four mics on my guitar, uh, depending on what we're recording. Um, even with some records, I've taken the, we've taken the DI as well as the mics, but I guarantee you they didn't use the pickup very often because the pickups just don't sound very good. I, I've never heard one that was as good as a good microphone. Um, 
Okay, so the second one sounds like this. One and, so we can go one and two and, and four and, one and two and, and four and. You can even just, even just tapping it out on your guitars. practice that now um, once you have that you can do we can try this go one and two and and four and so this one sounds like this it's almost the folk group if I if I just played a, a quarter note on beat one it would sound like this right this is the groove you everybody plays in fact if I'm doing bluegrass I play it really fast That kind of feel um, very very common this one's a little bit fuller it has one extra note in it consequently you actually have seven strikes so if you're gonna do the you know if you're gonna only hit move your arm when you're hitting strings you're gonna end up with an upstroke on the downbeat which is gonna sound totally crazy so that would look like this looks awkward, it feels awkward, it sounds awkward. If it's a rose by any other name, it's still a rose. Okay, so <laughs> quacks like a duck. I don't know. I can't insert the appropriate cliche here. All right, so this is that pattern a little slower. One and two and and four and one and two Okay, so let's play it along with the drum track. Two, three, four. Really nice. here so I can see you guys and wow it's so weird we have a lot less people today than we had yesterday well we had 61 concurrent yesterday I'm getting phone calls who's calling me S scams more scams somebody left a message make sure it's not important uh, I swear I'm gonna get rid of my phone <laughs> Need to, it's like all the calls that are, and for some reason, <laughs> for some reason, Apple's not letting me get Victoria Beckham's emails. She's trying to email me. Are you getting my emails? No, I'm not getting your emails. Here's my email address. <laughs> and she's still not getting through. I don't know what's going on. Um, but anyway, even emails failing me right now. So, um, uh, oh, I was going to say, I've got a little story for you, Diane, talking about One-Eyed Tom or whatever you said, <laughs> and a guitar teacher. <laughs> like, when I went in for lessons, I was a kid, you know, I was like 12, 13 years old. <laughs> Every week he'd call me Deadeye. He said, hey, how's it going, Deadeye? I'm like, 
wow, that's weird. Okay. And about six months later, I said, so how did, he goes, hey, did I welcome to your lesson? And I said, how'd you know I was blind in one eye? He's like, you're blind in one eye? Stop calling me dead eye. All right. So true story. Um, let's see. Now then the third one there is one and two and three and. So we're not hitting four. And that's another place. For, two and four are where snare hits typically are. Not always, but typically. And so it'll be another situation where we're going to play and we're going to stop. We're not going to strum on the uh, on beat four, which is going to make it kind of open up for the drummer. We can even do a, in fact, bass players do this all the time. It's uh, uh, this pattern. It's like. All those, are, those are all the eighth notes except for two and four. So what the bass player is doing is boom, boom. He's leaving a space for the snare drum. It's kind of, um, you know, the bass player should be playing with the kick drum, and the, and a lot of times the kick in that scenario in that groove, the kick the kick drum would be going probably boom 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 ka, boom 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 ka, boom 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 you know like that. So that would allow the um, uh, the snare to really pop because the kick drum's not playing on on two or four. And the bass player's not playing on two and four. So a lot of times that's what guitar players are going. We're doing the two and four. So we're, we're, we're matching the snare drum in that case sometimes. Okay, so this groove, the third one there is one and two and three and, and one and two and three and. and. So if up to tempo, just so you get a sense of what it sounds like. the first and second one but it's pretty cool it's pretty usable hey, Paco. <laughs> Gary uh, I, I I've been called both Tom Turkey and Tom cat so I, I don't know which I am that's for you you guys to tell me uh, I'm not a yo cat I don't think I'm a yo cat, but maybe I am. I don't know. So many musicians are. I try not to be a yo cat, which is kind of like, yo cat, what's up? You know, kind of guy, but um, I try not to be that guy. Okay, so let's slow this down. Down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. up. One and two and three. Definitely that here. Or gobble. A yo cat pepper is basically, I just it, it, how I've always used it, and I've, how, how I've heard it used is just someone who's a musician who's always trying to get gigs. I mean, you know, you're trying to get gigs, but you, people should just call you because you're the guy they want to call because you're good, not because you like bugged them. Or a yo cat's like, yo man, what's up? What's yeah, you got any gigs for me? Yo man, what's up? You know that kind of thing. It's like. You know, let it happen. Don't you know, don't be hounding someone nonstop at a gig or whatever. Or just trying to, you know, it's. I I, I actually know no guys like that. <laughs> one one will be remain un, un, unnamed. But I was I would I was with this one guy and he was like, you know, on the food chain he was up here and I was like, you can't even see me, right? I'm down here, and he's asked me. So he's another guitar player and he's like, so. Uh, so what are you working on, man? And I made the mistake of telling him the one composer that I actually was doing like a session every other month for. And the next thing I know, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that guy, yeah. You know, the next thing I know, the guy's getting a phone call from this guy who's like got seven gigs, 10 gigs a week kind of thing. So I'm like, really? Really? <laughs> but uh, 
he didn't he didn't know he i mean i never complained about lack of work and that's one of the things he said about me later was like man i really appreciate you not uh you know scamming and trying to get gigs for me i said well i'm just trying to learn from so anyway <clears throat> so um so we're just doing these, uh, Leo. We're just doing these grooves. Um, I'm gonna do. We're gonna do the third one on the bottom there, uh, the, de- uh, the where we're dropping the four. We're not playing on four, which is the downbeat. So now we're, we're. These are called syncopated patterns. I probably should have put a big sign up or something that says syncopated patterns. Uh, but if they're, if you have two ups in a row, it's syncopated. Okay. These patterns. Um, can I do? Yeah. These patterns are not syncopated. We have two downs in a row, but that's not syncopated. Okay. So if I were to put these in order, the the first the very first one, if we were to talk about, you know, the the uh, what was it we did the uh, shoot I call it combinatorics, but it's not combinatorics, it's something else. But if we were to drop the first eighth note, it would actually be the last one, the very bottom right one here. Okay. Then the next one we would drop the fir- first up or first and would be that far left one on this window. And then the next one would be the far left one on this window. And then the second one on this window would be, we're dropping the and of two. And now we're going to drop the and of three, which is the second one on this window. And then, so if I put them in order like that, um, I just did, I wanted to show you the non-syncopated ones first. And then today we're doing the syncopated ones because these are generally harder. Um, And definitely more complex to read, right? I mean, looking at that again, no quiz, take a sip. Celebratory set. No quiz on these. Um, uh, but this notation, you might eventually get used to read. You know, you might be able to read eventually. That's that's my hope. Not my goal. It's my hope. Um, and I will continue to throw these uh, this notation at you. But ultimately, what you're going to be doing is imitating me. Or or reading the one and two and three and and one and two and three and or the down up down up down up up down up down that kind of thing okay yeah i am getting a little better aren't i a little bit (laughs) but if i point here like this it doesn't work (laughs) like look at the first one over here (laughs) it's like the opposite so you gotta you gotta you gotta bear with me here um okay so let me pull up the groove again we're gonna do this third one all right Three, four, one and two and three and, and one and two and three 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 and one and
sorry. So here we go. Um, back to, okay, we got one more. Uh, Vito, I see your question there. Um, I, uh, I kind of, <laughs> in fact, I've got strings sitting right there. I've got, I broke the G string on a, se a session a couple days ago and I meant to sit down and change all the rest of these strings out, but I didn't get around to it. I use elixirs first off uh, for any instrument that elixir makes strings for, I use elixirs. Um, I kind of endorse them. I don't really, they don't pay me anything. I mean, I get a box of strings every year if I want, you know, like a like a ten bo box of ten sets or whatever. Most lately, I've got so many backed up strings, I don't really have anything I need from them, so I just uh, I don't I don't even get that. But um, um, but um, I change them when I break them generally, uh, unless I've got like if I want if I got a session tomorrow, um, I will put. Um, Probably, and I'm taking, if I'm going to use this guitar and say my, you know, one of my other acoustics, I might put new strings on the acoustics the night before. I usually do it the day before so they get a chance to stretch out. Um, and then uh, most strings, even if you don't play them that, my, my hand sweat is so acidic that I'll wear out a set of strings pretty much within an, within an hour. Um, so that's why I started using elixirs because they coat their strings uh, with Gore-Tex and that allows the strings, I think, to last la longer. The, um, the thing is, they kind of go on, they're a little bit dead when they go on. They're not as bright as brand new strings, but I actually prefer that because it just sounds a little more mature. It just sounds it, it, too brittle, too bright. You end up rolling off treble on a recording. So um, elixirs are more expensive. Uh, but, I, you know, they were kind of the first in the game to do this. And uh, now everybody's got coated strings, I think. Um, or most, most companies have coated strings. So basically, a coated string will last longer. Uh, but they are, and, and if they last three times longer, they're worth it. If they only last one time longer or two times longer, might not be worth it. One time longer wouldn't be any different. Than <laughs> so yeah, three weeks, you said three weeks, three weeks later. Yeah. The, I mean, they're, yeah, the, the, not, the shine is, I don't care what, if the shine is there, as long as they sound good. And the thing is, older strings will stay in tune for better until they get to a point where they're too old. Then they'll start to kind of. Uh, usually, what happens is I just break them because I'm hitting hard. And I, I, I broke, I broke the G string a couple days ago when I was working on a game soundtrack. When I was tuning down, I was tuning the G string down to E because I needed to get a weird chord. I was showing you that, um, and uh, so it was. It kind of, it, it kind of surprised me when I'm tuning up. I'm always like, you know. Keep my other, my one good eye away from the strings. <laughs> it would be bad. So, yeah, Peter, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I, I definitely, uh, and if, if they're tuning in high elixir, <laughs> they do promote me a little bit. I've done a video for them. Um, uh, it's funny because I feel like I look like an old man in that video now. I feel like I look younger, and it's been like six years. Uh, I think the beard helps. I don't know why, but. Oh, I touched my face. Okay, that's one of the rules. If I touch my face, we have to take a sip. We're not supposed to touch our face in the coronavirus era. Okay, so this last one is the weird one, I think. It's a little hard because we have to start with an upstroke. So it would sound like one, two, three, four. put it with the drums and the non-busy drums I took away the fills okay so it's gonna be a lot slower I <laughs> always go too fast hold on let me get your comments in here so I in case I need to okay one Great. Elixir has a bunch of variations now too. They've got the 80-20. Um, they got the nano web, the poly web. On a 
electrics, I use a nano web, but on acoustics, I tend to use a poly web. One. It's a hard groove. I, I'm, I, if you're struggling with that, I totally understand. I totally understand. I, I, it's a, it's a, that's, a, that's a tough groove. I don't know how common it is either. Um, I don't know how often I would do that group. I might, I mean, I know like um, one, of, one of the things that like reggae bass lines, they tend to avoid, if you listen to reggae songs, like listen to Bob Marley songs, oftentimes there's nothing, there's no bass on beat one. Usually that's where you would change the chord, right? But it's like one, you know. You know, there's a million ba different bass lines. Um, one of the things I loved was, I, I actually really liked Elixir. Um, and I talked to him every year at the NAMM show about bringing them back. But I really like Elixir classical strings. Right now I have no thumbnails, so it's super frustrating. So you don't have any thumbnail. Use a thumb pick. <laughs> Play like Chad Atkins. But they used to have nylon strings. And uh, but the problem with them is nylon strings really stretch a lot. So the Gore-Tex coating on the strings then would become separated from the strings, and it would create this like fur all over the strings. Um, but it you know it didn't bother me. The strings seemed to last pretty good. Yeah, these are not like, these are just I use um, uh, Augustine Blues generally. I think that's my main. Uh, I don't know if I put that up there on my. frustrating not having a thumb pick or pick a nail on my thumb I go to use it and it's just not there and I miss the string um, and so I changed guitar so you could sip and you, you caught that art caught it uh, Gary caught it lower this a little bit it's a little too high um, but uh, I think the the um, the fuzzy strings made for bad optics and and they got rid of them before the social media era, so <laughs> it was a good thing, probably. I don't think there's a way to fix that, unfortunately. Um, I uh, I would love for the you know for, to get them again. I talk to them every year. They're working on it. I said, go ahead and send me sets if you if they're experimenting. What was cool was when they did um, <laughs> when they did finally discontinue the classical strings. I was like the only one that liked them, so they sent me all they had, which was a lot. <laughs> So I had like a case of them and uh, eventually used them up, but also I was giving them away to, uh, I, I went to USC, the school, uh, USC School of Music, and I gave the, the guitar players there a bunch because they really liked them, actually. They liked the sound of them, which kind of shocked me. Um, but, uh, oh, Diodario is fine. You know, strings, is, is somebody said all the strings are made by, a lot of them are made by the same people. I, I bought a pair of Thomas in, uh uh, what is it? What's it? What's that um, maker of strings? Um, okay. Oh, also, let me uh, uh, let's see. Did I? What's the last thing I uploaded? I mean, here's here's the Discord link again. If you're just joining us or you've never, the, so there's a Discord cord group um, that uh, continues this talking about guitar stuff and supporting each other and things like that, and that continues on after we. Uh, finish here because we've created a community without knowing it <laughs> and so so many of the so many of the people here uh you know have videos they want to share so favorite songs or video music or pictures of their guitars which are awesome to see um and then i also upload i try to upload all of the images that i create for this oh kathy i'm sorry i didn't just now seen oh okay okay 
All right, well, I won't say that. <laughs> Kathy on the other note. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, I'll, t I'll text you later, Kathy. Um, so let's see. Uh, what is the um, here? No. How do I get back to? Oh, here it is. So at the. Um, okay, there's the ax. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, so I have all the accents. So I just need to upload. I think I can do it right here. The ones that you just saw, those new. Yep. Okay. So I so the great thing is I'm uploading all of these up there. What I would suggest doing is downloading the, the their ping files, their uh, screenshots, screen caps, or whatever. Download those, and um, uh, then you can. Um, uh, just you know, put you know, resize them on like a Word doc, so you can, and then print it up. Yeah, that way you can have one, uh, one page that has all of them on there instead of having to print each. You don't need to have giant pages of <laughs> one strumming pattern. So, uh, yep, Bruce. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the beauty of the elixirs too. It just here's you know, I mean, I give several reasons. One of the reasons I really like the elixir nylon. One of the most frustrating things. When you're trying to record classical guitar, um, is if you're doing something that's like, now these strings are old, so they don't really, the new strings really do squeak. And so with the elixirs, the squeak went away, and that was huge. Um, a lot of times, engineers would actually roll off the top of the uh, EQ just to get rid of the squeak, but then you lose some of the brightness of the guitar. Um, so I, uh, oh, thank you. Appreciate that, Rick. Um, I, uh, basically, you know, that's one of the reasons I like it. So on acoustics, it's very quieter. That's why I use the polywebs. Um, if that wasn't an issue, I'd probably use the nanowebs, uh, because the polywebs do sound a little darker, uh, cause there's a thicker coating, I believe. I'm not, I'm not an official spokesman per se for Elixir. Uh, the other reason, though, uh, I use elixirs is because I have so many. I, <laughs> like I told you, Vito, I have so many guitars. So, and I, that's just because that's my job. And um, if I wasn't a guitar player, I would. Ha I mean, if I was just a hobbyist, I would probably have two or three. Um, but I have, you know, I have a Rickenbacker 12 string. Well, the last thing I want to do the night before a session is restring my Rickenbacker 12 string. So if I string it up with elixirs, I know if. If I, I get that one call a year where I need to bring a, a 12 string or I need to get the 12 string out of the closet for a session or something like that, I know the strings are going to be fine. I don't need to I don't need to restring it the night before. Used to be I would restring almost every guitar the night before a session. If I was taking five guitars to a session, I would have to restring them if they were dead. Um, and that got expensive and it was time a waste of time. So when you have guitars just sitting in the closet, I've got acoustics that I know that if I pull them out and open them up at the gig uh, or at the session, that the strings are going to be fine. Um, same with so many of the electrics. So that's another reason for me. And, and it speaks to what, uh, hey, Charles, good to see you. Um, it speaks to what, um, I th who was it? It said Bruce. Um, oh, yeah, we, we haven't really touched on 6A patterns yet, have we? We will. I'll, I'll get to that, too. Um, yeah, Bruce. Uh, but yeah, Bruce says they last, for him they last several months. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, the Diodaros, like uh, Diane says, they're pretty good. You know, I don't really have a problem. I use Diodaros. I used to buy whatever is cheapest. Actually, my favorite string prior to Elixir was uh, uh, Ernie Ball Slinkies. I really liked the the. I would buy the Neon Pack. I think which were was those nines or tens? I don't remember. Because uh, I've since been using tens for a lot longer. I started out with nines, but um, let's see. And if you live in a very humid climate, um, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes, if it's really humid, strings will go bad in your closet because they're just getting moisture all the time, and that just really kills strings. Um, but if, if, pro art, yeah, I've had pro arts before. They're not bad at all. Yeah. I'm not really a, an aficionado on that too much. Again, it's like 
I could really get into it and go, you know, be the total gear, you know, nerd geek. I mean, there are guys that are like, well, this tube sounds better than that tube. And I definitely have feelings about that, but, um, you know, strings and well, this, this cable, you need to use a six inch cable. If you use a seven inch cable, it's going to affect, you know, like <laughs> you're, you're in, you're in Eric Johnson territory at that point. And I, I'm like, yeah, oh, you got to have a battery that's half used. So what I do is I plug in a battery into a radio and let it run for, you know, it's like, no, <laughs> it's like, I just not going to go there. Um, but I'm sure there are better sounding strings than I use, but most of what I play, uh, is going to be buried in dialogue. <laughs> so I don't know how much anyone would notice the nuance. I touched my face. Um, Yeah, uh, six eight. We can. Um, I may do six eight real soon um, because we kind of got through all of these eighth note patterns. Not all of them. I mean, uh, <laughs> we can. We have. I think there's forty thousand variations we could probably do. I don't know on that many, but uh, there's a million. You know, there's a lot of variations we can do. Uh, I think that six eight is a great. Uh, Pat, a feel and a lot of people really like playing in six eight. A lot of people like hearing it, so it's it's really worth doing. If you don't know what six eight is, it's basically a duple triple, so it's like a two th three sound. So it's like groups. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, so the great thing I, I've mentioned this before because I've talked about six eight before in videos. The great thing I love about 6-8 is it's great for two guitar players and you can both be doing different things. Like one of you can be just doing straight like. And the other one could be going. You know, and, you, and it'll just work. It just sounds great to have. I love to overdub and pan one left and one right and have them doing two different things. But they're both working towards the same thing. And the way you generally 6-8 is you count it one, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three. That's why it's called a duple triple, because it's over overarching feel is one, two, one, two, but then you break it down into triplets. One, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three, six eighth notes. That's why it's called six eight. And then Ed has a question. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've got to take off Bavar. I've got to take off in a couple minutes. Or I've got to stop and then I gotta get my, the car loaded up and head over to church. Uh, we're recording two services today. So just the, just the band and the singers. Um, oh, you like the nylon? <laughs> yeah. I, I generally don't strum nylon with a pick. Um, occasionally if I, if I'm trying to do like a pseudo, um, Roomba thing, like a gypsy King thing, cause I can't quite, my, I don't really have that, you know, um, let's see, I wrote down some Roomba vibes. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to do it on this guitar because I don't want to, this guitar's got cracks in it. I mean, I'll use my, uh, of course, it's not tuned. But I actually, when this whole coronavirus thing started, I said, oh, I need to work on my Roomba playing. And of course, <laughs> I haven't done it at all. Uh, but Gypsy King, I've got actually a movie coming up that they asked if I could do some of that stuff. I said, yeah. Um, but I can do it a couple different ways. I can do it the legitimate way, and I can also do it with a pick. And again, very, very subtle difference between the two when you're, when the scene is, it's a car chase. <laughs> um, but like, uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh -huh. So you can, you can hit on the, down here. It's, uh, see, this is not my forte. So you kind of have this kick, snare, kick, snare. And in between, you got to have the strums. That's it. Ah. I do not have perfect pitch. Uh, uh. But I can go faster. 
through with a pick. I just want to work on the rumba thing because it's still a lot of fun. It's just hard as heck. Especially, it's just, you get so tired. It's a workout. Um, so yeah, I've got I've got to practice those. I was kind of going through and, and compiling a list of different. They're all kind of similar. It's like boom, ka, boom, kind of like this one two thing, but they all do it a different way. Sometimes they use a thumb and then their fingers. Sometimes they use their fingers. Sometimes they use both. A golpe is what that yeah. Um, a golpe is actually the when you hit the top of the guitar, at this you know like this, and this guitar doesn't have a pick. See, that's a flamenco guitar, so that guitar has a pick guard on it. This one, you can tell I've done a lot of gold plays on it <laughs> before I got my flamenco guitar. Let's see where I get the, the reflection just so. Shoot, how do I do that? You can't see it, but there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, little <laughs> nail digs in here. And then this guitar has been cracked and repaired, so I really shouldn't be pounding on the top of it. Um, but that other guitar is kind of made to do that, so... Um, I, I can have a little bit more confidence in that. I just touched my nose. And I'm changing guitars like crazy here. So you guys are getting a lot of, you guys are getting very hydrated. Oh, what's out of tune? Odd tuning? Or was my nylon, was it out of tune? Yeah, a little bit. All right, so, raschiato. Yeah, raschiato, those are... Uh, Rascados are when you kind of the uh, the these things. You know. Well, you guys want me to leave, don't you? <laughs> Flamenco is the opposite. I mean, classical guitar is all grabbing in interior muscles, and flamenco is all flicking and exterior muscles. And so, you know, I, I can do even classical guitar, my hands get tired after a while. It's another reason not to be a professional classical guitarist because I don't think I could have the, uh, uh, the um, endurance to be able to play, you know, two hours of music in one sitting. Um, Plus, just the nerves of being the only source of music for the room. That would drive me crazy. And then flamenco guitar, it's like it, it, two minutes of rascados on my top of my hand is just killing me. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, you're looking out for me. I will look out for you. Um, yeah, Ben Woods is a good channel for Spanish guitar. You're right. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, so, what we're going to do... Tomorrow, maybe, uh, maybe we'll do some 6-8. I don't know. Uh, maybe tomorrow we'll do a review. I kind of, I mean, if I look at, you know, all we've done so far. Now, we haven't really talked about electric grooves at all. We've been doing mostly acoustic stuff. So, uh, but the, you know, the acoustic stuff applies to electric. You can totally do it. Uh, but you can see what we've done so far. Um, get this down here, like so. And then, oh, no, and then, oh, I can do that. That's cool. Okay, uh, boom, boom, so there, and then we did this. Um, in fact, I can even copy this. Copy. Go to the next scene. Paste, and there it is. That's cool. I'm learning more as I do this every day. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, <laughs> thanks, Dennis. So it is noon. I'm gonna take off because I've got to get. I got to be in my car, uh, packed in my car, ready to on the way at 20, 20 after. So um, and I got to set up my rig and everything. Um, maybe, maybe I don't know. I don't know if they'll let me do that. I'm trying to think if I could do a uh, little live stream from the rehearsal for a minute, but I don't want to get in trouble with playing music. And you wouldn't be able to hear my rig because it's all in ears and the amps are off stage. So it wouldn't be a, anything that would be musically beneficial, I don't think. But can't find his tuner. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. 
don't know. I know, and I have 80 tuners, but they just end up... Well, I have one here that needs a battery, so the battery died on this one, so that's no good. I just don't know where they went to. It's like... It's weird. I got my... I got my Ebo. I got my Page Capo. I got my nail polish. I got my Kentucky bourbon. <laughs> I just have it here so that, so that Beth, if she has a hard time sleeping, she doesn't go and get a glass of that because it would be like, that was $60 of bourbon you just drank, baby, <laughs> in one sip. All right, so, um, oh, you still want to see my amp room. You know, you can kind of see it in the video I did on, called Nail, Nail Your Next Gig or whatever it was. So anyway, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to end stream so that I can get packed up and ready to go. Uh, thanks for watching. A lot of people, well, actually, people showed up. Sorry about that. You're just showing up and now I'm leaving. I apologize. I'll be back tomorrow, 11 o'clock, my time. And then tomorrow I do have to leave, but I, but I just have to be done by in two hours. So I usually am, but I actually have a... a, a a meeting at a zoom meeting at one o'clock that I have to do. So anyway, uh, the nail polish is for my nails for my left, uh, for my right hand. It's a, it's not actually polish. It's just, it's strengthener. It's hardener. So, uh, nail tech and it, it works kind of, but I also get hang nails because of it. So you have to be careful. So yeah. Oh, I, it's all right. You can watch this later. All right. Um, old man is Zen is here. I didn't see you before. So everybody, I'll see you tomorrow. Roger's here, uh, Ben. Yep. Goodbye, everybody. God bless you guys. Talk to you soon.